Hi, this is Cindy from Vintage to New. Today we're going to be making this adorable apron with an attached hand towel to it. Very convenient. My mom was my campfire girl leader. We made aprons just like this back when I was in grade school. We hand sewed ours, but today we're going to use a machine and this is a really quick and easy way to make an apron. So without delay, let's get started right away. So let's look and see what there is about this apron that's a little bit different. It has an attached hand towel, so when you're doing dishes or you're washing your hands when you're cooking, you can just reach down and dry your hands off. A cute pattern, but it also has a hand-sewn hem in it. And if you would like to know how to do a hand-sewn hem, you could look at the video right up here. Um, you could also just sew this by machines. When you're deciding to make an apron, you don't really need to have a pattern per se. You probably want it to be down to your knees, so from your waist to your knees. So whether you're an adult or a child, measure from your waist to your knees, maybe just a tiny bit below your knee if you wanted it to be really practical. You need to decide how wide you want it to be. And I would say slightly over, a couple inches over, half of your hip measurement. That would work for a child or an adult. Then um, you need to decide how long you need to have your ties be. Um, you, you, we attach our ties here to the side. I'll show you how to do that in the video. But you need to have your ties long enough to go all the way around you plus enough to tie it into a bow or a knot or whatever you would like. So this apron would be wonderful for a gift. If it's Christmas time, use a great Christmas fabric. You could make a mother-daughter matching apron. Possibilities are endless. Okay, so let's get started right away. I'm gonna make this apron today. I had this in my stash, I've had it for years. It's this really cute cat fabric. So if you're making a gift for someone, pick something that um, they would really like and who doesn't love cats? So um, I thought this one was really cute. I am making it, so for your average adult woman, it would go from my waist to slightly below, or right about my knee. So I made this one 23, and a, 23 inches long, but I'm gonna put a three inch hem in the bottom of it. So it's gonna be 20 inches long, thereabouts when it's done. So that's how I chose that. Then you have to decide how full do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a really full, frilly apron? Or do you want it to be less full? Um, I wanted this one less full because I wanted to be able to see all of the cute little kitty cats. And if it was really gathered up and really full, it would be cute, but um, I wouldn't be able to see this really cute fabric. Okay, so then I had to cut some off of the sides. I decided I wanted to make it one and a half times the fullness that I wanted it. And I'm going to make it um, 20 inches wide. To figure out how, um, how much fullness you want, one and a half times the width would make it 30 inches wide. So if you wanted to make it double the width, of course it would be 40 inches wide. If you wanted to go really, really frilly full and go two and a half inch, two and a half times, that would be very, very full and you would times it by 2.5. So I decided on 30 inches. So I laid out my fabric and I measured over my 30 inches and you know me, I don't like to waste any fabric. And so 30 inches, 30 inches on this fabric would have had me cutting right through the face of these kitty cats that are all here in a row. And I thought, well, I could use this piece of fabric for something else if I had really cute little 
full kitty cats in it so I added a half an inch to the side so I have a little bit of sewing room on this side for this piece of scrap so mine is going to be a half an inch less than one and a half times the width and you'll never notice so this is my scrap that's going to go into my stash again so after you have decided how big you want it to be what kind of hem you want to have in it because you could put a really small hem in the bottom but i think it's really nice to have the weight of a bigger hem at the bottom so that's why we're going to do it that way you need to cut the um the ties and the waistband. You do not want to cut it so that when you're putting the waistband on your apron that you have a seam right in the center front of your apron. I wanted to have three inch to start with band across the top and into the ties. So I cut two six inch widths of fabric out of this. So there's my waistband and ties. It has an attached towel at the waistband and so that's what we're going to do. So this is one of my favorite kitchen towels um, and I thought it went really nicely with this and so I cut it in half. So this I'll save for another day and this is the towel we're going to attach right under the waistband. So we're going to start with the hem because it's really nice to be working with just a flat regular piece of fabric without all the ties and all that and it's not gathered or anything so start with your hem the first thing i did is went over and i i ironed up a half an inch so you see that half an inch right there then i found a cardboard box a cereal box but you could use anything and it was two inches in the spine of the box and i slid it up under this half inch, flipped it up like this. I pressed it down and as I went along, I put pins in it to hold it. So my whole hem is pressed with that half an inch and then two inches and it's pinned into place. Now, um, you could just sew this with a sewing machine and that would be just fine. Um, but I wanted to go over how to put in a hand sewn hem because it's just not done much anymore and it gives such a nice finish. Here is our hem with it being sewn in by hand and all you can see is these little tiny flea bites all the way across the bottom. It is totally optional. You could just sew right across that and still have the weight of the hem at the bottom or you could just do a really small little hem. The design of it is up to you. So we're ready to start work on the, the waistband. And so we wanted the front part of our apron to be 20 inches. So I cut my waistband 20 inches. Then I took the other width of fabric piece and I just cut it in half. All right, so there's that. And if you're bothered by it, you can take off the selvage edge. Um, I don't think I'm going to. I'll show you why in just a minute. So the, what we're going to do now is we're going to place right sides together and we're going to sew the ties onto each side of the waistband like that. So here's what the waistband looks like. So here's the center section. I used a 3 8 inch seam, pressed it open, and here's the ties that go down the side this way. So now let's go ahead and set this aside. The next step is to take it over and I fold it up a half an inch and then a half an inch and I pressed it, pinned it, and sewed from the top to the bottom down, folding over the hem at the bottom. So this actually strengthens your hem just a little bit um, and gives you a nice finish along both edges. So our next thing we're going to do is gather the top to fit the waistband. Our next step is to gather the apron portion and match it to the waistband in between the ties and sew it on. Okay, and if you need to know how to do gathering, 
Uh, there's a video right up here that you can check it out and I'll show you exactly how to do that gathering. So now we're going to take our towel and we need to decide. You can do it several different ways. You could gather it up and make it nice and full here on this side. Um, that's one way to do it. Or you could fold it up so that it's a little bit smaller and then just kind of sew it here on the side and it would be a little bit neater. So here it is sewn on and um, part of my decision making is I'm right handed so I want it on the right hand side. I wanted to make sure that this little center panel with these cute little kitties all the way down showed and then all the kitties that are covered up are repeated over here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it to the wrong side and we're going to match up our waistband side seams right here just like that and we're going to sew a half an inch seam all the way down to here and I am going to cut this this is why I didn't bother cutting this off I'm going to cut this at a 45 degree angle so I'm going to sew down from the um, the waistband all the way down at a half an inch I'm going to get to here and pivot and then sew off the end right here I'm going to do that on both sides okay you can see that I've sewn down both sides and so I'm going to trim off this pointed part right here at the tip of the tie because we're going to turn that and we want it to be a nice sharp corner and then I'm just going to trim this up this side to about a quarter of an inch so just trim it all the way up and then when I get to the um, waistband here I'm not going to trim that I'm going to start here and go down this way so down a quarter of an inch we just want to have a nice flat seam here when we turn it all right side out so I'll do that on both sides. Okay, before you turn your, um, your ties right side out, take this over and turn up a half an inch. It should match the same seam allowance that you used when you sewed down here. Turn up a half an inch all the way across the top of your waistband and press that into place. Now take time and turn your ties right side out. And using a um, chopstick or something like that always is helpful to get it nice and turned out and be sure to press out your corners so they're nice and sharp. So I went over and I turned it right side out, pushed out my corners, made them nice and sharp and pressed the ties. Then I flipped over and remember we had already folded this up that half an inch, the same as the side seams that we used here when we sewed. So then I press that over, covering up the stitching that we had, pressed it into place, and pinned it. And so now the last step for this entire process is we will start here and we're going to sew an eighth of an inch top stitch across the top here, completely encasing all of our gathers and all our stitches and all our raw edges. And then we're going to continue down the tie, across, up, across the top, and end here. So we will essentially just top stitch this whole tie and waistband area and we will be all done. So, and I'm going to do that at an eighth of an inch. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Here is our finished apron. We have our wonderful handy little towel. We have this beautifully finished waistband and tie. So when you're doing your top stitching, always remember when you're getting ready to take a pin out or you have to adjust the fabric, have your needle down so your stitches stay nice and straight. Do your very best to keep your stitches good and straight when you're top stitching. So go nice and slow. So I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, this was Cindy from Vintage to New.